Oh, yeah, right up there. Yeah, I went around to, uh, right before I met you, I went, had to go through, uh, Tonight we had the Betsy Lane Bobcats taking on the South Floyd Raiders and for South Floyd this is their first game as a school and tonight with me I have Kent Carter and Kent it should be another exciting football season here in Eastern Kentucky. It's going to be a new and different football season for sure Adam and I agree it'll be exciting and we've got South Floyd their inaugural season uh, their, their first game uh, last year tonight we've got uh, Pike County Central up in Pike County having their first game tonight I guess McGoffin County, and of course, the other WPRG game tonight is, as you were telling me, Mommy Go Phelps hosting mate one, am I right? Yes, you're exactly right. And I was talking to Coach Donnie Daniels of the South Floyd Raiders a little bit earlier before the game, and he said, had quite a bit of work to do this year with his team. He's had about 17 new players that uh, before this year have never played football, so he's got a little work, and this Betsy Lane team uh, are young, but they're improving also, so both teams, uh, kind of young out here tonight. 
Well, you know, the last couple of years, Betsy Lane has intentionally been in the rebuilding mode, and they've played some people strong in the first half last year, but then gave out in the second half. And if conditioning can catch up with desire, Betsy Lane will be tough to deal with this year, and maybe next year uh, extremely tough to deal with. As far as South Floyd goes, Donnie Daniels has a history that everybody in uh, Floyd County is familiar with. He's got a, a, got a problem, though. He's uh, trying to merge uh, two former programs uh, in McDowell and Wheelwright, two schools that were heated rivalries in basketball and uh, got to bring them together as one cohesive unit. And uh, we'll watch tonight, Adam, I think, as the folks will, as the game progresses, how well these guys get to know each other and, and form the friendships that'll make for a strong team. We're going to have the uh, opening kick in a moment. Betsy Lane uh, will be receiving. They won the toss, and uh, we'll have uh, South Floyd kicking away for their first time. Well, we're buying a little time here before the game starts. We also uh, excuse me, want to also mention that tomorrow night we have the Pike County Bowl, and that's always a tradition out there in Pike County, Kent. Oh, it's going to be wonderful tomorrow night. Uh, Pike will be playing uh, Lexington Catholic, and uh, then, of course, Belfry will be uh, playing Danville. Danville is one of the state powers year in and year out, as is Pike and as is Belfry. Lexington Catholic's predicted to have a down year, but at the same time, being a private school, they can reload by snapping their fingers. All they've got to do is look around the city and say, hey, how would you like to come to this private school? Yeah, they're recruiting. It, really, they are, and, and they admit it, because they can legally, in a sense, recruit. They can invite you to come to their school. Number 32 will be kicking away for South Floyd. That's Arnold Adams. That was a nice kick. Fumbled back deep by number one for the Bobcats, but now he's got control. Uh -oh. Open field up uh -oh. the middle. Only one man, that's Adams, between him and touchdown. Adams has got him, drags him down at the 40 of South Floyd. What a great return for number one for these Bobcats. Uh, that's about a 50-yard return that time. A beautiful return. I see. That was I don't have one. him listed on my roster. Do you? Uh, let's see. Yes, I do. That's Jeremy Rogers, number one, a junior for this Betsy Lane team. Excuse us right now. We're we're going to try to get used to everybody's names and numbers here. So just stay with us. I'm sure we'll get her down before halftime, anyways. A lot of new faces out there this year. And of course, uh, every year we've got to get our own act together. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. We, we as well as the football teams, we have, we have to practice a little bit before we can get it down. Ball resting just shy of the uh, South Floyd 40. Let's see what we got, some kind of award presentation or something. Let's see. It's a principal of Betsy Lane High School. I was not aware this was going to go on, so there's not much really I can say about it. This evening, we would like to honor and recognize South Florida High School as they begin their athletic career and new tradition and new future. Now, Adam, this is a good touch. Honoring South Florida's first season, this is a good touch. Yeah, nice way to bring them in. High School beginning football. And also, we'd like to present a trophy. The clock that says South Floyd Raiders versus Betsy Lane Bobcats, August 27, 1993. Congratulations on the beginning of a new era in Floyd County football. We are proud to be part of it. Presented by Betsy Lane High School. Boy, now this is wonderful. I got I to gotta give kudos to Betsy Lane High School here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful, wonderful gesture. Rogers return covers 53 yards, getting a first Well, let's see if Betsy Lane is still fired up here after that big uh, kickoff return by Rogers. That was a nice run. And uh, Betsy Lane breaks the first huddle of the season. 16, Marty Hamilton brings his team up to the line of scrimmage, waiting for the referee signal to begin play. Wishbone backfield for the Bobcats. Five man front looks to be played by South Floyd. Make that a six man front. Four down, two standing ends. Nothing going on that one. He just went straight for the tackle. 
45 on the carry, I believe, is uh, Rocky Hamilton. Loss of two on the play, second and 12 from the 42. Two yard loss on the play. Quarterback sneak. Grounds forward for a gain of about three. Makes up the loss plus one. Yeah, that front line for South Floyd doing a great job collapsing, filling the gaps well. And of course, Donnie Daniels is a good fundamental coach, and uh, that's what a new program, a beginning program like this needs, is somebody to uh, teach the game. There's no doubt about it. He's, he's definitely your player's coach, and, and he, try, he drills, drills what he wants them to learn into their head, and he sure gets the most out of them. Third and uh, a long nine for the Bobcats. Wishbone backfield again. Trying to move down the line of scrimmage. On the option, going nowhere. Going for another loss of about two, maybe three. Great penetration that time by the Raiders. And they're fired up. No doubt about it. Three plays and three times Betsy Lane has been unable to move the football. Really, they uh, they didn't even get a chance to move at that time. Uh, the penetration through the line came too quick and too too hard for them. No game on the play, fourth and ten from the 40. It looks like they might, might be going for it. No. Well, he's going to punt it away. So that's number 78 in there. Uh, Bubba Combs. Fumbles the snap on the punt. Oh, let him get it away. It's going to be Betsy Ray, uh, excuse me, uh, Raider ball no matter who fell on it. Tell you what, that Raider defense is just everywhere. They're getting great penetration off the ball. I like the uniforms these Raiders come out with. You <laughs> see some nice black and gray and white uniforms. I was listening on the radio on the way down, and I understand there had been some fear that uh, Pike County Central's uniforms had not arrived on time, but uh, indeed they have. Uh, orange, white, and blue, I'm told. And of course, these Raiders look great in, uh, in gray and black. Orange, white, and blue, and, and is their nickname the Hawks? The Hawks, yes. Power Eye backfield for the Raiders taking their first snap. Pitch back to the tailback. Adams sweeping around the right side. Stays on his feet for a gain of about seven, maybe eight. That's Aaron Hall, number two at quarterback for the Raiders. Hall, oh, nice job. Bulldogging his way through that time. He had a couple of Betsy Lane defenders on him, but he drove him for about four extra yards that time. Caught second and uh, a long three, maybe four. Again, the power out backfield wide out is to the left. Number one, Charles Johnson. Straight ahead, get uh -oh. fumble. fumble. And the Bobcats come out of there with it. And yep. the signal is Bobcat ball at him. So that was number 34 coming up with the recovery. And number 34 is Jamie Robinette. Yeah, that's something you always see a lot of in the early start of the season is a lot of turnovers. But as the year goes along, sure, both teams will come out of that. Oh, they'll get over the jitters. It's just going to take a while. Wishbone backfield for the Bobcats. Again, drug down in the backfield. Hamilton. Hamilton Lost about three. I can't believe the penetration these Raiders are getting. Tell you what, they're fired up. Definitely getting in there. Loss of two on the play, second and 12 from the 42. Had an official's time out there for equipment repair. He's got uh, his helmet uh, strap fixed back. We'll have action just in a moment. They yeah, like the new, the new look of Betsy Lane this year. They got a new football helmet style, the big B on the side of it. New look for me. Look good, nice bright blue uniforms. Snap. Give it to the second man through. He oh. went in the backfield immediately. Got I'll a tell you what. Like here. 
seems as soon as, as the running backs get get their hands on the ball, they're, they're a defender from South Floyd on them. Oh, they're, they're just getting great line penetration. I don't really know what Betsy Lane can do to stop that except maybe a quick pass out to the wing or a quick pass over the middle. That would probably stop the uh, linebackers from the Raiders from stunting on them because that's what's going on. They're sending more people than the Betsy Lane line can hold. You really can't necessarily add them fault the line at this point uh, in this stage of the season. But at the same time, because it's hard to pick up stunts this early. Yes. But it's true. You know, at the same time, uh, they're going to make some adjustments. I and believe, to make them quick. I believe South Floyd may be rushing a little more than what they tend to be in the middle of the season because they know Betsy Lane right now is just more or less wanting to work on their ground game. Quick pass over the middle to number four. Oh. He's hit by everybody just about. He got nailed, but he held on. Nice catch. Jackie Bush. So as soon as I say they're concentrating on the ground, ground game, they come up for short pass. But uh, that's exactly what they, they got to do. Uh, to uh, no soften up that yep. rush. Exactly. Still fourth down, and as deep as they are, they're going to uh, they're going to have to punt it away. Bubba Combs, I believe, back two punt at him. Got movement on the line. I didn't catch who it was. Was that Betsy Lane on the offsides? No, the Raiders. That might um, have a little something to do with how fast they're getting off the ball. <laughs> so that might bring a first down, and it does. Big break for the Bobcats. That's one of those fundamentals that uh, Coach Daniels will be working on the uh, team with. Don't give the ball away when, you, when you've got it. I was talking to you a little bit earlier, Betsy Lane's also got their field looking in mighty nice condition tonight for the start of the season. Particularly for the summer that we've had. Back to pass again, watch your blind side. Interception. Number 21 for the Raiders. Patrick Tackett, and uh, so, you know, Adam, some folks may wonder why that wasn't pass interference, because he did interfere with the travel path of, uh, of the best lane Bobcat player, but the ball was up for grabs at that point. Pretty well looked like he just, just threw it up there for anybody, because there's three Raiders around, uh, around the Betsy Lane receiver that time. So starting out on their own 15 will be the South Florida Raiders for their second possession of this game. Give to the second man through, Arnold Adams. Lots of running room, takes a good look, stays on his feet, falls forward for about three more. Hey, watch, you can see the intensity of these players out here tonight. I've already seen a few nice pops out there. <laughs> They're making the plastic crack, aren't they? Almost can hear it up here. More high up here in the press box. You know, we were here uh, a couple of years ago, Adam, for a uh, game between Elkhorn and, and Betsy Lane, and I heard the loudest hit I'd ever heard in high school football. And right about that time, the lights on the far side of the field went out. I believe I might have been up here on that game. We were off for a while. I believe I might have been here. I've, I've seen some mighty, mighty rough hits in my time up here myself. Again, again, two Adams. Working up the middle. It's a nice hole for him that time to penetrate. So that may be the Raiders' first first down of the game. First down. Wide out to the right. Power eye backfield. Takes the give to the first man through. Quick pass. Uh oh. Just barely oh. overthrows the receiver, Charles Johnson. It's a beautiful pass. It hung up our well. Maybe a diving effort on that might have brought it in. Exactly right. He was right. about there. Just and you know, well. the reason that he didn't get there is the uh, Betsy Lane defender within five yards of the goal line did hold him up for just a second, which you're allowed to do, and that threw the timing of, it, of that pattern off. 
He was definitely gone for a TD if he would have caught that one, though. Could have kept his balance after he caught it. Wide out to the left this time is Johnson. Pitched back to Adams. He's got running room. Brought down after a gain of about eight. Just another nice opening on the corner that time. Nice blocking by the front line of the Raiders. They uh, held from within the tackle in, and they kicked out the defensive end. And since uh, Betsy Lane plays with a free safety and two very wide corners, particularly the way Adams takes one of the corners all the way out with him, it will leave Betsy Lane open for that very type of flip play. the line of scrimmage. Just a straight ahead play over the right side between guard and tackle. Tack it, tack it on the carry. I'll tell you, Coach Daniels for South Floyd did a little mass substituting that time. Really? One, two, three, four, five players in and out. Six, six went off. back to punt. Straight up, going nowhere. Got plenty of height on it. Takes the big Betsy Lane bounce. Down at about the uh, 49, 48 yard line of the South Road Raiders. A, a very poor punt. Yeah, I believe we got a flag back here. I bet it's going to be rough in the kicker. And if so, that's going to give South Floyd a first. Well, you know, Adam, I think you're right. And the place the flag is laying can only be two things. It can only be rough in the hole. It's only two things it can do. By the indication of the Raiders, it is a rough and the kicker, so that's a big, I believe, a 15-yard penalty, if I'm not mistaken. I, I need to is. touch up on my penalties. <laughs> I'm a little bit out on it right now. But. 15 yards it is. A big break for the Raiders that time. Yeah, it's always a hard call to make, really, because you have a defender sometimes, they're just hustling, trying to get back in, they get tripped up and fall into the kicker, and it's, it's just so easy to happen. Really, it was definitely not uh, anything that we would term as gross or, or flagrant. Well, I believe we got a timeout on the field as Coach Donnie Daniels goes out and talks to his Raiders. We have two, 19 remaining in the first quarter. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back with more football action here on WPRG TV 5 Sports. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. The game is 0-0. Betsy Lane Bobcats taking on the South Floyd Raiders. And we have 219 remaining in the first quarter play. And Kent, so far we, we've seen some pretty good defensive play out of both teams. Has been a defensive game, Adam. And it's really hard to get used to saying South Floyd, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to mess up before the night's over and forget what your name is, but it's, it's new. All right, getting ready to snap the ball is South Florida. Aaron Hall, number two, the quarterback. Oh, what the? Give to the man coming around with that penetration. The big number 78, Bubba Combs, was too much for him, Adam. I tell you what, he just busted through the line untouched that time. Nice blitz. And that's, uh, that's a nine-yard loss. Quarterback at time for the Raiders, he dropped back and as soon as he turned around in the pocket, he didn't have no pocket. <laughs> Lost seven on the play, second down and 17 from the 45. Tremendous play there by Bubba. Back to pass. Pressure oh. out of the pocket. Oh, he just escapes one man, but he's dug down by another man. 
Number 57 for the Bobcats with a great, great sack of the quarterback. Let's see number 57. Jason Hamilton. Nice speed that time by Hamilton. That was about a five more yard loss on that play. He just he just was right there after the quarterback was forced out of the pocket to wrestle him down. So no pass protection whatsoever right now, but again, that's what you, you can't expect too much here in the early season. That's exactly right. Uh, you know what you have right there, you had three players of the Bobcats in the backfield. Uh, the first two had a shot at the quarterback and missed as he rolled out of the pocket, which is the smart thing to do. But as he rolled out of the pocket, he had no more protection, and right there, you, you know, the defender for uh, Betsy Lane was waiting to take him down. And that's how the game's played. It's teamwork. Very true. Wide out again to the left. Give to the second oh. and three. That's Arnold Adams. He's got the first down. I'm talking about that third down and about, what do you say, about 20, 25. 25. And he makes it all up in one run. I'll tell you what, big third down play for the Raiders. Did you catch who that was on the run there, Ken? Arnold Adams. Arnold Adams. Nice hoe and nice running that time. Oh, he had a hole you could drive a truck through. Oh, no doubt. He picked up about 10 yards before there's anybody, you know, within 10 foot of him, it seemed like. They're bringing it back. There's a penalty. Uh-oh, I've never even seen the flag land back there. You gotta wonder if that had something to do with the hole. <laughs> for it being so big. That puts them five more yards back about third and 30. So they got quite a bit of work to do here again. Well, you know, if anybody can get it back for you, Adams can. Third down and 29 from the 33 yard line. Good guess, Adam. He just called it 29. 29. <laughs> I was close. 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Again, it is 0-0. Pitch back to the tailback, trying to work around the left. Nowhere to go. There's a flag on the play and a fumble picked uh -oh. up by number 20 of the Bobcats. He's got a touchdown in there unless it's against the Bobcats. Let's see here in a minute. On the recovery and, and the run in, that was number 20, Brent Akers of the Bobcats. Let's see if it stands. The only thing I could figure it might be, might would be a face mask against the Bobcats. I'm not for sure. Let's see. Well, they're conferring on it out there right now. I really didn't see nothing. They threw it in those two, those two defenders on the South Floyd running back. So, oh, it happened right there at the play. And it evidently is against the Bobcats. Face mask, Adam. Is that what it was? Had to be on the tackle. <laughs> Quite a discussion going on here. Hmm. Yep. Face mask against Becky Lane. Good stats up here tonight. The crowd here at Betsy Lane definitely not liking that call. Tell you what, for the Betsy Lane crowds I've seen in the past couple years, this is this is quite a pleasant crowd. Nice, nice one on hand. There is a good crowd here, and uh, I'd like to see an even bigger crowd, game in and game out. That's what the young men need in order to uh, charge them up to get them to get out there and want to play. Tell you what, you talk about a crowd that Pike County Bowl draws off this crowd ever was every year. Again, we'll have that on WPRG tomorrow night. Well, Saturday night, sure will. And uh, these games that, uh, of course, 
uh, are being shown on tape delay tonight, uh, Friday night, are also going to be shown again tomorrow morning around the time of, what is it, the car show, Adam? Yeah, it's after the auto report. It's either around 9.30 or 10. I'm not for sure on the exact time. We'll try to get that before this game's over. Nineteen seconds to go before the quarter. Timeout on the field. Ken, I believe we'll go ahead and take a break while we got this timeout, and we'll be back with more football action again. It's zero to zero in the first quarter of play. More than ever, life is full of change, and sometimes change is good. Same with your cable package. By upgrading to streaming with Gearheart TV, you get a ton of features and content. That's entertainment for everyone, no matter what they watch or how they do it. Change doesn't have to be a challenge either. Streaming with Gearheart TV is easy to use on the devices you already have. Ready for change? Contact Gearheart TV and make the switch to streaming today. Back as you see some of the Betsy Lane crowd and the cheerleaders and the mascots and Nice enthusiasm in this Betsy Lane crowd tonight. It's a good fall night. It's a good way to start the football season under the lights. It means a lot to the players, too, to see a good crowd out like this. It makes them play that much more, much, that much harder. So the officials still discussing something on the field, huh? I think they're still know, discussing the face mask. I see. It, it must have to do with uh, with what what distance they're going to assess. The, you know, the five or the 15 yard version of the face mask penalty. Well, what what would that be on the run like that? Would that that would be a 15? I just about say with you. I don't know. Do they go by the roughness of it, or, or they, go, they, they go by the flagrance of the of the infraction with face masking. Looks like we said it was pretty intense because it's going to take 15 off. They sure are. Pretty flagrant. So it's uh, third and about 16. First quarter is winding down fast. Third down and 17 from the 45 yard line. Nine seconds, seven. May get this play off. And they don't. Well, that will end the first quarter of action. Again, you're watching Betsy Lane take on the South Floyd Raiders. We'll be back with the second quarter action again. Your score zero to zero. You're watching football action on WPRG TV Five Sports. My family means everything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24-7 monitoring. We control our system from anywhere, and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit GearheartSecurity.com to learn more. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Okay, let's see, this is third down, and I believe they said about 17 starting the second quarter action. I'll bring it back to you, Kent. Power eye backfield for the Raiders. Wide out is to the left. Give to the uh, tailback. Nowhere to go. Adams is hit immediately. Stood up and stopped. And, you know, we were talking earlier about what great penetration the Raiders were getting. Well, now Bobcats are getting all that penetration. Got up together the defense, too. They're just seeing a two and three man just busting through. Fourth down. 
want to force them to punt from back there. So the Betsy Lane Bobcats ought to get a good field position out of this. Punts away, and over in. Ready by number 45 for the Bobcats, trying to thread his way upfield. Finally met it about the 40. Follows forward for a couple more. Flags on the play oh. everywhere, three flags. May have been a face mask on that, wouldn't you say? Most likely that or spearing, considering all the bodies yeah, running around. Yeah. Tell you, that was a nice second and third effort that time by the return man of the Bobcats. I didn't get who that was. It was number 45. I believe that's Rocky Hamilton. <laughs> Haven't yet got an early indication. And this is the thing you have to have to sit through if you're a fan in the early season of basketball, football, any of the sports is always the fouls and the turnovers and penalties and all that stuff. The refs come out pretty hard on the kids when the start of the season comes, but more or less it's it's the best for them to come later on down the road toward the end of the season. That, that's that's a very good observation, Alan, because if you enforce them early. You don't have to try to explain later why you changed the way you're calling the game. You've maintained control throughout the season, established a pattern with these young men, more likely to be able to deal with it. It's gonna be against the Raiders, so uh, whatever it was, and I haven't seen it, it is face masking. The, the indication is that uh, they're gonna get a grip on this game and get it early. Well, that face mask is something you definitely have to keep under control because they can get you hurt fast, especially if you have a pretty snug helmet on. That won't turn any when you get <laughs> get the face mask. The next guy know where to go, right? Yeah. All right, Marty Hamilton has his team up to the line. Wishbone backfield for the Bobcats. Double tidy and set. Gives to the tailback, trying to find him around the left. Switches the ball. He has the corner. Oh, that's right another down. face mask. Yeah, right you it. are. Right you are. No doubt about that one. And you know, both teams just need to learn that you don't tackle the guy by the helmet. That was a nice run that time by number 29. Let me see, that was the freshman on this Betsy Lane team, Craig Hamilton. So that's going to put them way down there. It's going to put them inside the Raider 20. It'll be first and ten on the 19 yard line. Betsy Lane threatening. See now what the Bobcats can do if they can push it in down here. Not giving much at time. Definitely not. Nice defense that time up the middle by the Raiders. <coughs> I would say that's a game of about two. <laughs> Tell you another thing I noticed about this Bobcat team that I, I like that I've seen. They got about three eighth graders and a bunch of freshmen and you know as well as I do, that's where you gotta get started. You gotta get started in the early years, and that's what makes Pipeville such a, a dominant football team. They get them started in the peewees up there, and these these teams in in this area really need to get it started if they want to have a good football program. Need to get it started in the early years. There's the snap. I give it to the first man through. That's number 45. Rocky Hampton, you know, Adam, what you're saying there is true. I'm looking at the roster. Only three seniors showing for these Bobcats. A young team. Very young. Timeout on the field by the Raiders. Timeout, South Floyd. I was going to give us a time. I'm not sure how much time's left here in the second quarter. They're messing with the clock. But either way, I believe there's around nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Again, your score is 0-0. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back with the second quarter 
of play. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Not everyone gets this excited when they discover the joy of Gearheart TV. But it happens. It's kind of a thrill to see every channel in HD. Go back in time with Replay and Restart TV. Record to the cloud. And watch TV everywhere on any device with no set-top box. Your excitement may vary, but there's a lot to cheer about Gearheart TV. Available now. Visit MyGTV.com now to sign up. The score, they're down on the nine-yard line, but it's third down, so let's see what they can produce here on the offensive end of things. Third and about five to go for these Bobcats. Wishbone backfield. Again, a give to uh, number 45. Maybe a first down. Rocky Hamilton working on the right side. He's going to be close at him. If he doesn't have it, he's real close. We may have to bring out the oh, sticks. Look oh, look at this. I would imagine the Cats will probably go for it. Since I believe that right now would be a good chance, even early in the season, to uh, see if you can't uh, punch that ball into the yard. Pick up a five on the carry, fourth down and one from the five. Wishbone backfield. Marty Hamilton under center. There's the snap. Oh, he got He's it. Hit. He may be Man. in. He got the handoff. He's close. Pickles will call him down on the one. So, another nice run by Rocky Hamilton. For a minute, I thought it was a quarterback sneak. It all happened so fast, but. <laughs> well, the quarterback got hit and took out of the picture real quick, and uh, you lose sight of him when you think he's up in that line. But he got hit just as he was making the exchange with the, with the tailback. Quarterback sneak over the yeah. middle. He's got it. Nice call by the Bobcats. That's quarterback Marty Keith Hamilton for the score. And that is the first score of tonight's ball game. And it is six to nothing in favor of the Bobcats. And the Bob, Bobcat faithful are excited here. Oh, yeah. Adam, you, have you heard anyone say, will South Floyd be moving next year into the double-A ranks? Or, I mean, that's, are they going to be considered a double-A school? Uh, that's a little bit more than what I've, I've gathered so far. I'm not really sure how they stand on that. I'm sure I'll find out plenty about that come basketball season. But right now, I'll tell you, it's really going to seem funny come basketball season that there's not going to be a McDowell or a Wheelwright in that, basketball. Isn't that really true here in Floyd is. County? Going for two. Sweep to the right. Quarterback's going to try to keep it. He's met, but he's in there. Flag on the play, Adam. Maybe a holding call. I don't know. It was over on the opposite, opposite side. side. Yeah. Yep. Well, the Bobcats evidently aren't worried about it. Holding against the Bobcats. Yeah, they should be worried about it. Away from the play, too, where there's absolutely no reason for it. So let's see what to do here. That'd be quite a kick for a field goal kicker, but I'd assume that they probably still will go for two. Well, they'll, they'll go for two here. The question is how seriously they'll go for two. Maybe a little lob pass or something on the corner. You know, this early in the season, it's the same possibility they could just fall on it. Delay a game. Yeah. Yeah. They're making it hard trying to earn that two points. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking harder and harder that the Bobcats are going to complete this. Offsides. If they hadn't snapped the ball, he must have lined up offsides. 
Who was it? Was that against the Cats or? Yeah, he called offsides against the Bobcats and, and they must have lined up offsides because they had not snapped the ball. Well, what did they do, decline it or something? No, they moved the ball. Oh, did they? Or a five yard penalty? Yeah, five yard. Okay. Now a pitch to the man coming Ooh. around. He's got the corner. He can turn on the burners. He's got it. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Jeremy Rogers on the sweep to the left. Hey, what? He's had some big runs tonight, not only on special teams, but that one, a nice one. Now, that's hard to believe. I would have bet you lunch <laughs> that he was not going to be able to convert that two points. I wouldn't have thought it either. Sure not, especially on a running play from that far. So on that two-point conversion, that moves the Bobcats out to eight, and it's eight to zip. Bobcats will be kicking away here in a minute. South Floyd having a little bit of trouble getting lined up, getting ready to start. Now we get to see what kind of kicker the Bobcats have. South Floyd's kicker did an excellent job of the first kick. He got plenty of boot on it. He sure did. Something you don't see a lot of in, in high school is this real strong kicker. Well, he put it down on about three. Yeah. I believe that's Bubba Combs is who's going to be kicking for the Bobcats. Yes, it is. 6'3", 285-pound junior. Seven fifty nine remaining in the first half. And if you just join, eight to nothing in favor of the Bobcats. Short, taken by one of the up men. Number 20, misses one man, touched by another, finally thrown down. Bubby in on the tackle. Number 20 for this uh, South Floyd team is uh, Chet McCarty. Rocky Hampton did a good time, um, excuse me, he did a good job that time shaking off the block because he, he got blocked pretty hard, but he shook it off and, and made the tackle and, and probably uh, preventing an extra 10 yards at time. Oh, yeah, yeah, at least, Adam, you're right. I think Bubba's a crowd favorite, though, don't you? <laughs> yeah, he seems to be. The big guys on the football team always seem to be anyways. Well, you got to lie. Well, It'll hurt you if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here come those Raiders. Again, a give to Arnold Adams. Skips around outside. Pretty nice run there. Game of about four on the carry. Tate for South Floyd being a, a first year school and I'll they have quite a nice turnout for the football team. Uh, probably got over two times the players the Betsy Lane Bobcats have. Oh, yeah. And it just been their first year. So a lot of interested folks up there down the Beaver Creek area, Will Wright and McDowell. Fakes the give to the fullback, lofts it up there, overthrows his man, out of bounds. The passing for number one, Charles Duncan falls incomplete. Intended for Charles Johnson, number 29 for the Bobcats. Defending on that play is, uh, I think you said he's a freshman, uh, Craig Hamilton. So he's getting tested early out there on that corner. Getting early experience out there as a freshman for sure. Give on the 
Misdirection play to number 44. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Speed. Uh oh He may be free. No. I'm sure he had that and shook for a minute. Cruz Cobble with a great run. Misdirection play. Came and ace breaking that one. Oh, he was high stepping. It's just like he had something a little bit slippery on him that time. He was just gliding through her. And I believe South Floyd and Darling Daniels called a timeout with 6-16 remaining in the first half of action. The Bobcats of Betsy Lane, 8, and the Raiders of South Floyd, nothing. We'll be back with the remaining remainder of the first half. Again, you're watching WPRG TV 5 Sports. Caring for the loved ones of others during their twilight years can be an emotionally challenging task. Don't mistake that challenge as something completely draining. There's a lot of potential for a hospice nursing career to be emotionally rewarding. Hospice nurses seek to help patients live life to its fullest. If you feel this is where your heart can truly help others, email us at info at appphchs.org or call Appalachian Hospice and Home Health Services today. Hey, sorry, buddy. You're all right. Right in, the, right in the gut of that line, and I have a feeling that may be on the Raiders. Right there, you would expect it to be, you would expect that to be holding, right? Yes, right that's, that flag that's is. what I'd expect it to be. But Adams, he, I'll tell you what, he's, he's a workhorse out there for the Raiders. Oh, he, he is. He's the guy that's uh, going to carry the mail for this team. And they're bringing it back. And then they're going to take some more off it. False Ooh. start, is that what that That's was? That's right. That's right. Man, illegally in the motion. Illegal procedure against the Raiders bringing out first and 15 from the 43. About first and 15 for the Raiders. 547 remaining in the first half. Quick pass. Oh! Ooh, broken up out there by number one. German Rogers. Yeah, and uh, that's something you really just don't see every day right there, the, the lateral over. That's a, that's a play if you can get to, if you can execute it, that, that can really produce and put some points up on the board. The pass after the lateral is something you only try once a game and, and, and not every game. for about a two-yard loss. So, Betsy Lane's still doing a, a nice job of collapsing on her defense, and that's pretty well been the summary of this, this first half for both teams, it's, it's been the defense. Really, because those points that Metzelaine put up there in large part were due to the penalties. And we're getting some equipment problems out there for the Bobcats. They're about to get it fixed, I believe. <clears throat> The replay of this game can be seen on WPRG TV5 tonight, immediately following the game, and tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Well, uh, Tell you what, just Miller, talk a little Adam bit about the before the game. Seven. We're standing up here and just playing the national anthem. I didn't notice the flags right under us <laughs> here. We was definitely... You thought everybody was still with you, huh? Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> Felt good there for a minute. <laughs> Tell us seen that flag. 
Man in motion is Adams. Ooh. Misdirection play to the fullback going nowhere. He's wallowed down the line for a loss of about two. Cruz Cottle. Three Betsy Lane defenders in there at that time. Adam Roberts was one of them that headed at that time. And see number 44 limping off the field. Let's see who is that. 44. Sophomore Rodney Hamilton. What Donnie Daniels is trying to do with this misdirection is he's trying to take advantage of the very penetration the Bobcats are getting. I look for him to try some trap plays here in a moment because uh, with this misdirection, it's still taking too long to set up, so he's going to have to go to this next effort, and that'll be the trap plays. There's the punt. Oh, Good. almost got it. Good end over end punt, though. Takes the Bobcat bounce. We'll have to wait and watch the placement, but I'd say it's around the 25. Tell you what, if that would have took a kick the other way, that oh, would have yeah. been a dandy punt because it would have been right down there around the goal line. Oh, yeah, that, that was that was looking good if it just turned over. So with 350 remaining in the first half, Betsy Lane has Quite a bit of field to cover here to try to score again. Taking the ball over on their own 24-yard line. They're in there packed awful tight. Man in motion down the line, turns up. I thought he might have turned early, but no. Quarterback keeper swooping around the right. He's almost got the first down. He's real close. Nice quarterback keeper that time by Hamilton. So he picked up about nine, wasn't you? Oh, he got nine for sure. He was real close to the first down. In fact, he got the whole 10. I knew he went right out at the yard marker. <coughs> Pick up 11 yards on the play. 11. First down, Lane. Great, great play by the quarterback there, Marty Hamilton. Wishbone backfield for these Bobcats. Double tight end set. They're a running team. Give to the tailback. Looks like number 45, doesn't it, Adam? He's almost there himself, down after a battle run of eight. To yeah. 45, Rocky Hamilton. Rocky Hamilton. He's, he's worked pretty hard for the Bobcats this first half. And we've got a uh, uh, South Floyd player down. Acts like it might be his leg. Yes, the leg and knee area especially is always subject to get hurt in this football. Adam, Mark, what do you all think about maybe taking a timeout while they're attending to this young man? Well, we'll sure do that, Kent, with 3.08 remaining in the first half. It's Betsy Lane 8, the Raiders of South Floyd 0. We'll take a break and we'll be back with the remainder of the first half. You're watching WPRG TV 5 Sports. the injury, Bobcats pitch back to the man coming around. He's got the first down, still on his feet, bounces off, finally down at about the 43-yard uh, line. Great run and play there by the Bobcats. There's a flag on the play. And that was Jeremy Rogers again for the Betsy Lane Bobcats. He's he's quick out there, doing a uh, nice job. He's, he's got the speed to run that corner. <laughs> Well, this is going to be against the Bobcats, I believe. It's a late flag. So, ooh, big 15-yarder. So what did he get to, a face mask? Is that what it was? I missed the call. I didn't catch it myself. But uh, it's second and five for the Bobcats. Uh-oh. 
good there. Sackman number 44. Bruce Cottle for the Raiders. He was just hot on Hampton's path that time. Hampton really having no time to scramble back there. You don't know nobody checked him at all. Linebacker blitz and it paid off. Thrown for about a 10 yard loss or maybe more, about 12 as a matter of fact. It's third in the country mile for the Bobcats. trying to find room on that left side. Not much happening for him that time. If he could have got a little bit more toward the corner, he might have been gone somewhere, but uh, the Bobcats are going to have to punt away as it is fourth and 12. And that's going to leave uh, the Raiders with a little time to work here too, especially if it's not too good of a punt because they still won 34 remaining in the first half. And uh, we've got timeout on the field. Uh, Donnie Daniels talking with his uh, team. So as Donnie Daniels talks to his team, and I believe it's Coach Durosset of the Bobcats, well, well, let's see. It must have been a short timeout. Well, the we'll Bobcats are back out here. ready, but Donnie Daniels is still out there talking. The officiate, he likes to take the, the, yes, he does, the full timeout when he goes out there. The official's out there talking, and uh, the coach of the Bobcats, we haven't mentioned him, is John Durosset. And he's doing a good job with the team this year. He, uh, I'm not, is he a, is this his first year as a coach or is his second year? You know, uh, I, I really don't know. We need to check on that and be able to tell the folks, uh, those that don't already sure know. Sure hate that I don't know it, but last season I missed out. I didn't do any football and didn't keep up with it. So I'm not really, really for sure what's happened to this Betsy Lane football program, but we'll, we'll try to f figure it out. They need to get a few more bodies out there. I can tell you that. There's the snap. Punts away, not much of a punt, not much at all. Takes a little bit of a bounce for the Bobcats. Picked up by number 26, and he's wiped out at the 45-yard line. And I do mean wiped out. Nice special team defense that time by the Bobcats. It's a poor punt, as you said, but they still get the man back on the 45. So with 124 remaining in the first half, the Raiders have quite a bit of the field to work with. 124 to go. Ball on the 44-yard uh, line of the Bobcats. First and 10 for the Raiders. Single set back, double wing wide out to the right. There's the snap. Oh, oh it's a quick pass. That's a fumble. That should have been rude as a fumble, wouldn't you say? His arm was not going forward, and if your arm's not going forward, it's a fumble. Well, that was definitely close. That was, I would have called it a fumble if I was the ref out there. I didn't think his arm was going forward. Official. You know, I, I really didn't. I, I did not think his arm was going forward. It definitely was caught, but it wasn't going forward. At any rate, uh, it's second and 10, and the Bobcats are still getting that great penetration we've been talking about most of the evening. So the Bobcats has about three or four sacks as well as the Raiders. They've been getting to the quarterback tonight. What about pulls three? Game of about six. Hall. Aaron Hall. <laughs> Time's definitely ticking down for the Raiders. They need to get moving. 37 seconds remaining in the first half. Pick up a six on the play, third and four from the 39. Clock ticking. Pitch back to Arnold Adams. He turns the corner, met by a couple of them Bobcats and then a couple more. He'll be down at about the 35 yard line, under 10 seconds to go. I don't think they can get it off, Adam. No. No. He's out of timeouts, and the time runs out on him, so that'll end the first half of action here at the Betsy Lane football field. I'm not for sure what it's called. I have to check on that, too. I'll tell you what, I'm out of it since I've been. You went to school here. I know it. I'm, 
And but, the Lloyd Hamilton Athletic Field? Lloyd Hamilton. Yeah. Lloyd yeah. Hamilton okay. Athletic Field. Okay. So, with that in mind, we're going to take a break for this, these halftime festivities, and we'll be back for the second half of action again. Your halftime score, Betsy Lane Bobcats 8, and the South Floyd Raiders nothing. Again, you're watching football action on WPRG. My family means everything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24-7 monitoring. We control our system from anywhere, and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit GearheartSecurity.com to learn more. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. More than ever, life is full of change, and sometimes change is good. Same with your cable package. By upgrading to streaming with Gearheart TV, you get a ton of features and content. That's entertainment for everyone, no matter what they watch or how they do it. Change doesn't have to be a challenge either. Streaming with Gearheart TV is easy to use on the devices you already have. Ready for change? Contact Gearheart TV and make the switch to streaming today.
Detroit School Boys and Giant Stump by Betsy Lane Elementary, Harold Elementary, and Prater Elementary. Grades three through eight. If you're interested in playing football, you need to report to Betsy Lane High School on Monday, August 30th at 3.30 p.m. for sign-ups. Also, Coach John Barasa would like to thank the following for the football field cleanup and painting along with the concession stand. Larry Cecil, Paul Brooks, Junior Cecil, Mike Potter, Walter Combs, the Betsy Lane High School coaching staff and players. Ready? Yeah. 20 seconds and counting for the start of the third quarter. Again, if you just joined us, I'm Adam Gerhardt along with Kent Carter, my good buddy, doing tonight's ball game. And again, your halftime score is Betsy Lane 8 and South Floyd 0. And Kent, the first half was pretty well a defensive battle between both teams. Oh, it was. As we were saying just before we uh, took the halftime break, uh, the eight points that uh, Betsy Lane has on the board uh, where they were able to take advantage of a series of missteps and penalties on South Florida, which is a new program, and therefore that's to be expected. A lot of these boys have never played football before. At the same time, uh, Betsy Lane's had its share of penalties and uh, missteps, and uh, both defenses, on the other hand, have played very well. Uh, they've got a lot of penetration. Yes, on the Betsy Lane drive that they scored on, I believe there's about three penalties involved in that that really, really helped the Bobcats out. But they did a good job when they got down around the goal line of getting the first downs when they needed it and, and then punching it on in for the score. And we were both very impressed, if you'll recall, Adam, with the, the uh, extra point attempt uh, yeah. where Jeremy yeah. Rogers ran about 25 yards for the two-point conversion on a sweep around the left side. He's got some speed. You can pretty well say they earned that two, oh, yeah. that two points. They sure did. That's a hard-fought two points. But uh, we're going to be starting the uh, third quarter here in a few moments. I believe that uh, we will probably have time for another commercial break here in just a second. And uh, what we do is uh, we can take that break and come back uh, with third quarter of play. Uh, here from uh, Betsy Lane Field, uh, Hamilton Field, and uh, uh, bring uh, hopefully another uh, exciting half of football. start the third quarter and Betsy Lane is kicking off and what we said earlier about a freshman on this Betsy Lane team getting a little playing time I believe number 10 out there for the Betsy Lane Bobcats is listed as an eighth grader Derek Stanley and uh, he's uh, right here on the uh, kickoff team uh, next to the end and uh, he's about one of the littlest people I've ever seen play this game well, I tell you what that's some big time experience being able to play varsity football in eighth grade just being on the special teams, just going out there two or three times, that's enough to, to get you into it anyways. Well, it's most likely going to keep him with the sport throughout his high school time. All right, number 11 going to be kicking off here. 
That's Adam Roberts. That's a new kicker from the first half. First half was Bubba Combs. Bubba, I think, has got uh, a cramp or something in his uh, calf from the way he uh, limped off earlier. <laughs> two what, one or two more blocks right there, he would have had a wide open gap. Still good return out to the 40 yard line. It was interesting a moment ago, number 86 for uh, South Florida. Uh, Harold Hall was uh, being attempted to be blocked by uh, Derek Stanley, the eighth grader for uh, Benson Lane. And he really didn't know how hard to hit him. He was just standing looking at him like, what, what do I do? <laughs> Here come uh, the uh, South Floyd uh, natives. Give to Arnold Adams. Tell you what, number 45 that time, Rocky Hampton, just smothered him as soon as he got the ball. Nice deep. He uh, pulled Rocky forward uh, for a few yards, but Rocky was all over him in the backfield. So, Betsy Lane's defense still playing pretty intense out there. Second it's always a good sign when you can, can get your uh, defensive backs in there to, to give them losses. Man in motion is Adams. Give oh. to the fullback, but he's got nowhere to go. That's Cruz Cottle, nowhere to go. And again, number 45, Rocky Hamilton with the tackle. So he's been pretty active on the defensive end of things, for sure. Bubba Combs got some kind of um, protective device on uh, his left calf, and I, I think that's why he's not kicking uh, this half. Third and eight from the 42. There's the snap. Fumble on the snap. Uh-oh. Betsy Lane's got it. Yep. What right side comes up with it there? 34, I believe. 34, Jamie Robinette. And that ball just, there was a big pile up for it, and it just squeezed out. out from him and went right in his hands. He was definitely in the right place at the right time. So the Bobcats going to take over. The Bobcats take over first and 10 at the Raider 42. So the Bobcats with good field position. Start this to start their offense here on this third quarter of play. Wishbone backfield again for the Bobcats. Double tight end set. A snap. Give to the tailback. Mm. He's hit hard, but he's fallen forward for a few yards. Flag on the play. Jeremy Rogers on the carry. Technical difficulties. It says against Betsy Lane. I didn't. I believe it might have been a face mask. Been a lot of those tonight. I'm not for sure if that's what he signaled, but it's definitely going to be a long penalty. Well, there ain't no doubt that's what it was, because we're marching it back. Nice night for football out here. It's really cooled down. It's the first of the game. It was, it was hot. awful hot up here. We were just dripping sweat. Give to uh, Rocky Hamilton. Kind of pops outside on the right. Wrestled down by Arnold Adams after a game of about uh, we'll make that five. To another thing I noticed about these two defenses. It's not just one man that's making the tackle. There's always about three or four defenders there. Oh, they're swarming to the ball, without a doubt. Pick up a five on the play. Second down and 19 from the 49. Second and 19. Yeah, 
So we either got an official timeout or got an equipment problem, I think. It's fixed. The official starts the clock. Man in motion. Act pass. Oh, the throws almost picked off. Number 44, Cruz Connell almost had him one there. I'll tell you what, number 34 that time, Jamie Robinette appeared to be wide open downfield. Don't know if Hamilton caught a glimpse of him or not, but seemed to be wide open. He uh, was way under, uh, way under number 34, so I don't know if he didn't see yeah. him or. Well, again, or, he's not getting much time to pass back there, so he can't be too picky. That's right. Been watching too much NFL here this <laughs> preseason. <laughs> Third and 19 for the Bobcats. They're about to move the ball this time. Pitch back to Jeremy Rogers coming to the left. Uh, he's deadly around that corner. Oh. Nowhere this time, though. Going to be down after a gain of about uh, five, maybe six. So it'll be fourth and about 14 to go with the Bobcats a punt away. Yeah, 66 at time. Nice tackle. Solo. Oh, nice right. solo tackle. He wrestled him down. He bulldogged him. Number 34 back to punt. Well, that's a new punter for the Bobcats. Yeah, uh, Bubba's just not able to kick with his leg in that shape, and I'm not sure who number 34 is. Oh, and he was going to take off with it. But we have flags all over the place, so we won't be doing that this time. I wouldn't even have a clue what that call's going to be. <laughs> I Procedure. And now Bubba's out there to punt. Fourth down and 19 from the 49. Just couldn't, couldn't hold up that time. He's too anxious. He couldn't get set. That's uh, Jamie Robinette, according to my listing, but I don't believe so, according to what we're seeing out there. 83. Let's see if I have anything different on my roster. 83, sophomore James Bolin. Okay. I got it. Corrected on mine. I believe you got one out of the yeah, Florida Pike County that, Times. Out of the newspaper. Nice punt. Not very long, but a high punt. Fielded and fumbled. There's a flag in the backfield. That was Bubba come back in to punt that, and he went down, and definitely he's not looking good. That leg isn't right now. What's going on out here? One of these players rape, wrapped up in a blanket or something. <laughs> it's different. I believe that that's number 10, uh, Derek Stanley. I believe he's also acting as ball boy tonight, and he's using like a sheet to wipe the ball off to get the dew off the ball. Oh, I see. As I went down at halftime to the concession stand, well, the nice people was right there to give us our Cokes and drinks and stuff. I was talking to some of the linesmen. It's doing a fine job over there tonight, and they, they said they had a rough time getting this field ready, but i tell you what, they done a heck of a job. Oh, the field looks great. It's the best I've seen it look in, in the history of this football field. All right. Mm. 
Little run and play to the rack there. Picks up a few, but he's hit hard. Hey, we still haven't seen one of them big head-on collisions yet. I'm waiting for the first one this season. It could be this game. It could be four or five down the road. But that first, that first one that you can hear way up here in the press box, that's the ones I like to see. May see a little bit of that tomorrow night. Could, you could get some hard hitting tomorrow night. You sure Denver, could. one of the top teams in the state, always one of the top teams. Of course, Pipe and Belfry also right there. Then Lexington Catholic. Quick give. Not much happening. Oh, there's a flag. Tell you what, he just threw it at the, at the, at the Gilly play that time. He just fastball right in your helmet. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Personal foul. And that's a big 15 yarder. That's another one of them rough penalties that you definitely want to try to stay away from. Oh, you don't need it, and it doesn't do you any good. You had the guy wrapped up. Whatever it was that you did right in front of that ref was totally unnecessary. Mark's doing his best to give me a headache. <laughs> Had a few technical problems, but we, we got her straightened out. First and 10 for the Raiders. Give to the first man through, still on his feet, still charging. Finally dragged down. Gain of about six, maybe seven. He so just muscled his way through that time. Really nowhere to go, but nice second and third effort to pick up a few that time. Luther, PA man, just I ask a few people down here on the far end to move back from the Sideline now, they finally are. Referee's timeout. Something to do with equipment. Let's see. Gonna send in another player. Now he comes back off as the equipment problem gets fixed. Tell you what, this game's moved by pretty pretty quick tonight for the first game of the season. Still 4-19 remaining in the third period again. It is eight to Bobcats, zero to the Raiders. Pitch back to number 26, the tailback. Oh, oh, he's hit hard, but he got a couple. Nice job hanging on to the ball that time because he definitely got popped. Chad Sloan on the carry. for these Raiders, tackled by Robinette. Third and one, good little carry there. So through all the penalties and everything, the Raiders are finally starting to get groundwork down here. Well, they're gonna have to establish the ground game and move that ball. Give to Arnold Adams. Ooh, He's hitting the backfield. Don't believe he got it. Oh, I don't believe he got it at all. Might have lost one, as a matter of fact. Oh, look at that placement. Oh, look at this. He must have got that falling forward in the pile because uh, when he was stopped, he did not have that. But now look at that. Right, here's going to be a gutsy call oh. by, by Daniels. That's close enough down. to measure for sure. Close enough to measure. Now they bring out the sticks. If my eyes are not deceiving, deceiving me, I believe it's my good buddy Perry Jones from over at Will right out there. That's who it is. out on the line crew tonight. And he's short. No man on the play, fourth down and one from the 50. Can you believe this? <laughs> Adam, that's about a football field length away from being a first down. So it 
looks as if the Raiders are gonna go for it on this fourth down. Oh, nice breeze starting up up here too. Yes, definitely. Thank goodness. Power out backfield. Oh. Well, that's gonna cost them five. I believe the Raiders may have been trying to pull the Bobcats off that time, and one of the linemen got a little anxious and jumped off himself, forgetting what the count was. So if somebody's got to go, it might as well be me. <laughs> Happens all too often. I can't wait you any longer. Come on. And sure enough, that's going to put them in a punting situation, fourth and six. Arnold Adams back to punt. Bobcats aren't sure that he will. They don't have a real safety back. They don't have they a don't have, They don't think he's going to punt. And he does. Straight up. Takes a Raider bounce, though. Then it takes a Bobcat bounce. Oh, so it's down. Oh, well. Now, he, sh he should not have done that, though. I mean, your, your excitement there is right. The number 45 made a, a, a dangerous move trying to grab that ball and it bouncing loose like that. I was, wasn't sure if you just had to touch it or... I mean, he just kind of batted. I figured, you know, it's a live ball if he didn't catch it and, and down it or something. Well, you know what? Once the once the Raider touched it, it was down at that point, but you don't always know that the official sees that. Yeah. You better stay away from those live balls. Oh, about 2.15 to go here in the third quarter, Adam. Bobcats take over. So far, Marty Hamilton going all the way at quarterback for these Bobcats. Senior, number 16. He's done a fine job commanding them tonight. Hand off to number 45, Hamilton. Works his way up the left side. That's Rocky Hamilton. He's seen, seen a lot of action on, on I said it earlier, on the defensive end of things, but also here on the offensive end of things, he's carried the ball quite a few times tonight. He's a good workout. Yes, he is. Pick up a four on the play, second down and six from the 27. Ooh, nice. oh, oh, he got stripped to the ball, though. Good cut, but then he got stripped. There's a pile up. Let's see who has the ball. If the Raiders have it, they're in good field position. It was number 29 on the carry. It got stripped. The fumble was covered by number 11, Adam Roberts. Oh, but they say uh, the Bobcats retained possession. Yeah, he made a good, a good move that time to pick up a couple extras, but he left the football out, you know, <laughs> just out where you you, don't, you want to keep it in, tucked in beside your side, but that time he, so. Well, he was holding it out like a loaf of yeah. bread, without a doubt. No doubt. Third down and one from the 33. Hey, Betsy Lane keeps their offense tied in there. Oh, and just a little shovel give to number 11 there. Adam Roberts, who plays fullback for these Bobcats. Tell you, his momentum was enough to pick up the first down that time. But picked up more than enough yardage for the first down. And there is 40 seconds remaining in this third period of play. Again, if you're just tuning in, Betsy Lane Bobcats up eight to nothing over the South Floyd Raiders. And again, it's the first game as a school for the South Floyd Raiders. So it's got to be something special for these guys to look back on about 20 years from now. Say they played the yeah. first game. Pitch back to Jeremy. Oh, I love the way he stays on his feet. Look at this. We got a flag down. He only gets back to about the line of scrimmage. But uh, it's the way he twists and turns and tries to stay alive out there. Jeremy Rogers, exciting runner. Don't have any idea what this He's going to be a dandy for this year's over. Going to be a dandy. Holding on the Bobcats. That was Patrick Tackett. 
on the tackle earlier. So that'll be a, a 10 yard penalty. Yeah. Yeah, 10 yard penalty. Betsy Lane have just enough time to get one more playoff before their time. Well, uh, no, they're not gonna make one. And Adams, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, it's it's been kind of a fast-paced game, to tell you the truth. Something you wouldn't expect for a first season game, but it's went by pretty good. And we have 12 minutes remaining in tonight's ball game. And the score is Betsy Lane, eight and the South Floyd Raiders, nothing. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter here at the Hamilton Athletic Center here at Betsy Lane. Again, you're watching football action on WPRG TV 5. My family means everything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24-7 monitoring. We control our system from anywhere, and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit GearheartSecurity.com to learn more. Can we're ready to begin the fourth and final quarter, and let's see, the Raiders have it at, or excuse me, the Bobcats have it back at the 30 yard line. I'll take it back to you, Kent. All right, thanks a lot there, Adam. Begin the fourth quarter with a handoff to number 45, Hamilton. As his legs took out from under him, but uh, he makes them know he's been there. Rocky Hamilton on the carry. He might have got to Beth knocked at him that time as he went down sideways, but as soon as I say it, he jumps back up on his feet. Tough kid out there. Patrick Tackett on the tackle, and uh, he got shook up a little bit himself. Pick up a five on the play, second down and 15. Tell this crowd here at Betsy Lane is going nowhere. They're staying right here to watch the finish of this one. Oh, this game is far from over. Man in motion is Hamilton. Fakes the give to the fullback. Pitches uh -oh. around to Jeremy Rogers. He's got room on the left. He's trying to get to the corner. He's Ooh. caught. Finally thrown out of bounds after a gain of about five. And there's a flag on the play. What would you say? Maybe clipping on that, and that's where the flag flew. Uh, well, the flag was out there definitely uh, downfield with the ball. There's way too many penalties, even for the fullest game. Holding on the Bobcats. And it was the downfield blocking that was holding, too. It wasn't on the interior line. I tell you, you can just feel like something's going to happen when, when he gets the ball in his hands. He just explodes around the... Oh, he's got the, the speed to turn the corner. There's really uh, nobody out here that has the kind of speed that he's got on the corner. And I believe they know what's where his strong point is, too, because that's the only place he's running. That's right. around the corner. That's right. Sometimes they kick him off tackle, but I've not seen it inside tackle. So second and uh, 12. For the Bobcats, wishbone backfield, double tight end set, back to pass, no, bootleg. He's caught in the backfield, works his way forward, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, and he's back there, but uh, still, yeah, it's gonna be third down and about uh, 12 to go. Tackled by number one, Charles Johnson. Make that third and 11. So Betsy Lane having a rough time trying to get something through together on this drive. Well, he intended from the start to roll out. That was never intended to be a pass play, but uh, his protection broke down way too soon for that to develop. Man in motion is Hamilton. A snap again a pitch back to Jeremy his way through there trying to cut up he makes one cut looking for the second one finally drug down after a game of about six the carry no he's somebody come out free. with it Lee, uh, Hampton, yeah Rocky Hampton come out with it and got even closer to that first down but they're still shy a couple yards oh if they give him the progress he's within a yard or two of the first down
say uh, fourth and two, I would say. I think they're going to go for it. They're definitely going to go for it. I believe if I was Coach Dross it over on the Betsy Lane sideline, I'd go for it too. It's early in the season. You don't want to let one like this slip away from you, but I still believe I'd go for it. Time out, Betsy Lane. So if we can excuse us for the technical difficulties, but with that timeout by Betsy Lane and Coach Durosset, we'll take a timeout and a break. Again, this is the fourth quarter. There's about nine minutes remaining. The score again, Betsy Lane eight and South Floyd zero. We'll take a break and we'll be back with the rest of the fourth quarter. Again, you're watching WPRG. remaining and Betsy Lane with the 8-0 lead and we're back to action. Kent. All right, wishbone backfield for the Bobcats. Hamilton under center there. Oh, moving oh, on the line. Offsides. Look here, he pointed. No, this no, man no. was offsides, <laughs> but he's able to do that as long as, as, long as he gets back for yeah, the snap. Right. So, no. <laughs> he's <laughs> pleading his case, but I don't believe he's going to get away with it. I, don't, I, I can't see him pulling this off. There you go. There you go. He stood up. You can't do that. He didn't jump off sides, but he stood up after he'd set, and you can't do that. So we want to remind all of our viewers of tonight's second game on WPRG, and that'll be Phelps taking on Mate One. And that'll be a battle. I'm not for sure. Is that at Phelps? That you're I believe that's at, at Phelps. Phelps okay. And I believe that'll be coming on just as this game ends. So anybody watching this game and not tired and I don't see how you could be tired of early season high school football. Uh, watch that game. Pumped by Bubba Combs. Not a very long one. Fielded there by... Uh, oh, he's got plenty of run room. He's got room on the outside. He's oh, gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's There's no here. penalty. He's out of here. Look, bye look. Bye. Unsportsmanlike conduct will be on Arnold Adams, I think. Oh, no. That's a hurt. That will hurt. They'll either have to call number 11 uh, of, of the Bobcats yeah, with, he's with down blocking him or they'll have to call Arnold Adams with hitting him because that's that's what happened. I don't. I'm sure Mark didn't catch it because he's following the ball. But but I was trailing back looking. Is there going to be one? Because I knew he was gone. And yo, right it's there. Bring it back for sure. And that I tell you what, that play was executed well. The blockers blocked everybody to the inside that time. And the whole corner out here, you know, well, on the sideline over. Is was, it going to be on Arnold Adams for unsportsmanlike like conduct, or is it going to be on number 11 of the Bobcats, uh, Adam Roberts, for? Uh, uh, clipping or, or trying to down block. It looks to be on South Floyd because they're marching back. So and I believe you're right. And that's the kind of thing that, that Arnold Adams ought to know better than to do. Uh, I, know, I know he's a young man, a high school student, but you know, you play this game within control and you're right up there with them. You lose your temper over something, this is what happens. Yeah. And that's definitely a backbreaker there for the Raiders. Well, there's just no doubt that's a nice, that's that, a, that display of temper has cost and is unsportsmanlike conduct and face masking. Against the Raiders, face mask against the ball team. Oh, it was a double, double penalty. penalty. Time, so. But it brings the ball back. And uh, if the unsportsmanlike conduct had not occurred, there would be a touchdown now by these Raiders, so without a doubt, you know, and, and I, I don't mean anything derogatory by it, but Arnold Adams losing his temper has cost his team a touchdown. That's, that's and that's something to think about. Definitely hurts. Definitely hurts. So we're staying out here as they try to sort all this out. The penalties will offset, and it'll be first and ten, but it could have easily been eight to six, and if the two-point conversion had been made, eight to eight. So uh, that's a costly, costly penalty. Back to pass. Got time. Overthrows the man over the middle. 
There's four Betsy Lane defenders on the receiver that time. Nice coverage by the Bobcat secondary. Oh, good zone coverage, and they all converge together on the ball, and that's what you're supposed to do. Hall really couldn't get it over their heads, and the receiver was under them. But he put it in there where it couldn't be picked off, at least, and that was a good heads-up play on his part. And this would, this would definitely have to mean a lot to the Betsy Lane Bobcats to get a win, the first win of the season under oh, yeah. the belt. Because, you know, Betsy Lane, the last few years in the football side of things has definitely struggled, but uh, it's good to see them uh, playing as well as what they are tonight. Well, you know, they probably only have, from the looks of the sidelines, 22 players dressed. You know, most of them freshmen and eighth graders, really. So uh, the juniors and the sophomores are the bulk of this team with several freshman starters and some eighth graders actually seeing time on special teams. And then you look at the numbers here, which would have to approach 40 for uh, the um, South Floyd Raiders. Arnold Adams on the carry. He's hit, still on his feet, finally down there. A gain of about, I would give him uh, seven. Yeah, that's, that's something you have to remember, though. South Floyd being a, a new school in Iowa and about 17 players, I believe, I gathered from Coach Daniels that has never played football before. So that's a big transition to stepping right into a high school and uh, trying to compete. You know, I would I would imagine, Adam, that uh, most of those 17 are probably from the McDowell yeah, area. Yeah, they just about have to be. Straight ahead, give. He's close to the first. Number 44, Cottle on the carry. Tackled by number 11, Adam Roberts. And while he's Cottle on the carry, and he's, uh, he's still down. So on this injury, I believe we'll take a timeout with 740 remaining in the ball game. The ball cats up. Eight to nothing. Again, you're watching WPRG TV Five Sports. Caring for the loved ones of others during their twilight years can be an emotionally challenging task. Don't mistake that challenge as something completely draining. There's a lot of potential for a hospice nursing career to be emotionally rewarding. Hospice nurses seek to help patients live life to its fullest. If you feel this is where your heart can truly help others, email us at info at appphhs.org or call Appalachian Hospice and Home Health Services today. Approach the offensive line. Back to you, Kent. Uh, fourth and one to go, Adam, for the Raiders. They need this bad. Give to the Oh, He's good deed by Rocky Hamilton. Nowhere to go. He's been in there all night giving that quarterback pains. Nowhere to go. And Arnold Adams on the carry loses about two. Not just the quarterback, he's giving the running backs a hard way to go also. Oh, he's been all over him. And you know, he plays the linebacker position, so he's getting in on stunts. Or should I say a short way to go because they're not, they're not picking up too, mu too much yardage when he gets in there. So the Bobcats take over first and 10 on about the 45-yard line. Under seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Wishbone backfield, double tied in set. There's the snap. Give to the fullback. 45, Ooh. Rocky Hamilton, he's he's right at the first down. There's a Four flag ball. on the play. Oh, I'm getting so tired of this. Rocky yes. Hamilton on the carry. Quite a few, and that may be a face mask. Yeah, no. Holding on the Bobcats. Holding. I have a pretty good percentage calling them the first half, but I, <laughs> I can't buy one this second half. <laughs> I haven't got one right yet, don't believe. Well, after a nice run by Hamilton, it all comes back. Yep. As it's happened a lot for both teams tonight. A lot of setbacks. First down and 14 from the 41. Wishbone backfield for the Bobcats. Give to the tailback. Looking for room, trying to turn the corner. 
He's going to pick up about uh, four, almost five. The 29, Craig Hamilton on the carry. That one take his time to push over its uh, principal Osborne up here at Benson Lane. He's, he's really, since he's been up here, he's, he's changed his school dramatically. They really got quite, quite some school spirit up here now, and, and I, I credit a lot to him because he's really done a fine job up here. We want to thank the PA announcer tonight for all the help that he's given us. And we've missed them. We've been able to pick it up from him, and uh, he several times gave uh, our show a plug, so we appreciate that. Again, 29 on the carry. He's got the first down. That's Craig Hamilton. Betsy Lane crowd and band, they're, they're still in it. Liking it, liking it all. I've been listening to this drummer down here, Adam. He's awesome. I tell you what, they, <laughs> they definitely got some bass on that drum over there. Sounds good. Got five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. It's still an 8-0 game. The Bobcats with the eight-point edge. Moving the ball well, too, here in the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the 43-yard uh, line of the Raiders. We're strong backfield. There's the snap. Give to number 45, uh -oh. Hamilton. He's got the first down and a few extra. Rocky Hamilton on the way. He just seems to find where the gap is every time. Oh, he does. Takes advantage of it well. And you know, the Bobcats are doing something we got to do with all the penetration that both defensive lines have been getting. You're going to have to hit those holes early or they're not going to be there. You're going to get it in the backfield, which is what's been happening a lot in the first half. But uh, they found the key here in the second half. A little quick plays. And the Bobcats uh, again with first and 10 from the 30-yard line of the uh, Raiders, threatening to score here in the fourth quarter, Adam, with uh, about 4.20 to go. Well, that would definitely just about, I'd have to just about say I'd put a seal on the Raiders if they would, if they do score again. If the Bobcats can get another one, that's got to be it. Oh, number 11, the fullback picks up 10. Adam Roberts, he, he's right at 10. He's a Seems like the running backs for Betsy Lane's just now getting loosened up. They're starting to carry the Raiders <laughs> defenders here. Yeah, they're warmed up now. Yeah, they're just now ready to okay. them play. Give them a gain of nine on that. <laughs> Second one to go. Oh, he just carried them right up. Moving with these now. But again, it's that quick hit in the line, you know. And when you have gaps that big, you always have to credit that big offensive blocking line. That's right. Done the job. Oh, the quarterback sneaking. It went before any count. As soon as he touched him, that was the ball. Nobody moved. And he's got it. Now, that was a good, smart play. That good was. coaching by Coach DeRossett right there. Good sure call. Was. Good preparation. The quarterback walked up, touched the center, center, snapped the ball. Nobody on the line moved. None of the backs moved. I liked that. That caught the Raiders off guard. It caught his own team yeah. off guard. <laughs> the only two guys that knew that were coming. You know, the center and the quarterback. Oh, that was beautiful. Hats off to you, Coach DeRossett, and hats off to your center and quarterback combination. Center big number 54. We haven't mentioned him now, but that's Tim Hunt, a six-foot sophomore. Listen to that band. They're getting into this. Oh, yeah. Give to Rocky Hamilton, but he's hit the line. Nowhere to go. Number 21, Patrick Tackett tried to dive over to get a lick in on that, but his own man had knocked uh, the runner out of the way, so he just landed on the greener. And listen to that Bobcat band get down. So good, it's a little mark. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mark, get a little shot that. over here if you can swing it around. They're doing a fine job over there tonight. Listen to it. All right. Nice job by the Betsy Lane Bobcat band. As we have a timeout on the field, we have 2.46 remaining. Eight to nothing, the Bobcats with the lead again. We want to remind everybody, coming up next, the Phelps Hornets are taking on Mate One. That's tonight's second game on WPRG. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with the remainder of this game. You're watching WPRG.
When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, Social Security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Second and ten. Quarterback Keeler, he's drugged down in the backfield. There's a flag on the play. I, I've got to tell you, I'm getting so tired of the penalties. Hey, man, hey, I'd say the officials' arms are getting quite <laughs> sore out there. They about have to be. There's, you know, they, they, they've thrown enough flags to have been uh, pitching a pro game, you know? I'm telling you. The face mask against the Raiders. Been quite a few face masks, too, so that's going to march it even closer for the Bobcats. I want to take his time out quick to thank our P announcer here at Betsy Lane, Jimmy Cecil. He's done a fine job. He's gave us a few plugs and mentioned the name a couple of times to the fans. When and we, we appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, we appreciate the heck out of it. And uh, let everybody know when we're going to be playing it back and when they can see it again. And for everybody that's listening right now, this game will be played back tomorrow morning directly after Bruce Walter, excuse me, the Bruce Walter Auto Report, I believe about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. And of course, uh, right after this game tonight, if you go home and catch us, uh, you can see Phelps and Matewan. And we've got viewers over in Matewan, so you need to be watching this game. And from what I hear, Matewan's got a dandy team over there this year. Oh, they always do. They're always a real strong power over there. And nothing happening on that play. It was second and about two, but nothing happening. I believe I was talking to the doc man the other day, and he said something about talking to Matewan's coach and said he's having a rough time getting teams to come over and play him. You yeah. know, it's their, but you such know, a good team. Adam, we, we talked to him a couple years ago, and he was telling us the same thing then. I don't, I don't, I mean, I know Mate One's tough, and I know that uh, you go into Mate One, they're going to put a whipping on you if they can, but I'm beginning to wonder if he isn't trying to put the fear into the players before they get there, you know? But I, I got news for him. You, you won't scare those Phelps boys over there. You, know, you might beat them, but you won't scare them. Seems like the, not the past football season, but tomorrow before that I did a few football games and I got a chance to do Phelps and Mate One. It was it was a battle. Oh, Mate yeah. One got the best of them that game though. Well you know Mate One is a great football team and they're probably gonna beat you most of the time. But uh the, the psychological game, if that's what it is, won't work on the, on, the, on that side of the river over there with those guys from Phelps, you know. Yeah. They'll just Phelps has always got teams that hustle and play hard, that's for sure. They'll hit you. Yeah. <laughs> they'll hit you. They'll meet you on the line and they'll hit you. Third and one to go. Let's see if these Bobcats can punch it across. We're going to have to wait here for a player to come out as we have an equipment problem for the Raiders. So the Bobcats out to a nine yard liner, threatening the score once again. 219 here in the fourth. Give to number 45, Rocky Hamilton. He's got enough forward momentum. Now they've pushed him back, but if they give him forward momentum, he's got it. Uh, I believe you're, you're right on that, Ken. I'm pretty sure the momentum came. Yeah, moving so to this signal. Yeah, he just got it though, look. First and goal to goal. As best I can tell, the ball's on about the uh, six-yard line. Six-yard line, yes. And with under two minutes remaining, you can just about smell a big B. I know the folks are best lane are excited, aren't they? You know, they're, oh, they're not used to yes. seeing this in football. They're not used to, you know, uh, I hate to say it, but they're not really used to seeing them win too much here the last few years. But hopefully this year will make a difference. And it's good to see them win the first game. He's close. Drug down just in the nick of time, number 29. That's uh, Craig Hamilton on the K, running toward the left. Be second and goal to go on about the one, maybe the two. I'll wait and see on the two. Second and goal to go from the two. I want to remind all of our viewing audience out there in WPRG land that tomorrow night, Saturday, we have a Big Pike County Bowl on WPRJ. You want to catch up. Good teams in that one. All right. 
We get a flag on the play. Don't know what this could be. Delay a game. So I believe that Pot Kenny Bow has. Let's see, uh, Belfry is playing Danville. Yeah. And Pot was playing Lexington Catholic. Yep. Ah. Uh, tongue twister for me for some reason. I messed up on that a couple of times tonight. That's the matchups tomorrow night. Second and goal to goal from the eight, Adam. 57 seconds remaining, it looks like. And it will be a Bobcat victory tonight. Barring a catastrophe, that's that's what you can count on. Let's, yeah, Again, they're fumbling. Give to number 29, he cuts up field. Is he in there? That's a TD. He's in yeah. there. He's in there. Give back score to number 29, Craig Hamilton. Well, you can put the stamp on her now. <laughs> She's out of here. Dandy Don Meredith, Monday yeah. Night Football. Turn out the lights, <laughs> the party's over. And that's all but all my rowdy tonight. friends are still coming over tonight. So. <laughs> that's right, Hank. Friday Night Football. All right. 14 zip right here. We're going to wait and see what happens on the uh, conversion attempt. 49 seconds to go. Bobcats have, have really played their hearts out. Not to take anything away from South Florida because they have too, but they, they just executed a little better and, and played a little harder, it looks like, tonight. And, and good victory for the Bobcats. Well, now, you know, the Raiders have no reason to be down. I can't think of too many programs that have played their first game and won it. You know that? Oh, that's true. There that's he is. True. Two points again yeah. for Craig Hamilton. Nobody even touched him on that two-point conversion. They didn't know where it was going. They they're, they're gave out here at the end of the game. It's too new for most of them. Yes, this, Raider, this Raider team in a couple years, they're going to be hard to handle, especially if they keep having turnouts like this. You get this many players and you have this many, this much talent to work with and stuff, you know, it's going to take a couple years. But once you get a program at well, a school know, like South Floyd, it's going to be tough. They draw from the whole left Beaver Valley yeah. area. It's a big area to draw your student body from. A lot of athletes out that way. Oh, there are. And, you know, I expect that this is going to make them a heck of a basketball team. Oh, no doubt about it. Them and I have to say that uh, the Pike Central team is, is going to be a dandy here in a couple years also. Well, you know, uh, speaking of Pike Central, uh, which merged Mullins and Johns Creek this year, uh, I grew up and went to Mullins up there, and a lot of my friends went to Johns Creek, and uh, if you had to compare the two schools' basketball problems, you would say that Johns Creek produced height and Mullins produced speed. And if you can imagine a combination that ought to be deadly, it'll be at Pike County Central. I'll tell you what, that's a pretty good synopsis. I never really thought of it like that, but you're, you're right. Mullins always known for its speed and Johns Creek for the height, so if they get them guys playing together good, that, that should be a deadly team. We're going to have the uh, kickoff here in a moment. Timeout, Betsy Lane. Timeout, Betsy Lane. We might as well take one last commercial timeout, guys, if that's all right with you all. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take one more. 49 seconds remaining. Betsy Lane with a 16-0 lead. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with the remaining 16 seconds. You're watching WPRG. Smile, girl. Act like you like each other. This is our Chicago. Stop! We're going to enjoy every minute of it. You two come in or what? Hey, wake up, brother. It is payback time. It's bigger than the two of us, Tom. You got to decide for yourself who you're going to be. The Bellator K has landed. To kick off for the Bobcats, only 49 seconds remaining. And it will be a Bobcat victory tonight. Adam trying to get the team up and ready to go. That's the kick, short. Oh, oh fumbled out, bounced right off his head. Picked up, landed on by number 24 for these Raiders. Bounced right off of 21's head. 21's Patrick Taggart. 24, Richie Johnson. Johnson on the cover. So the crowd's 
finally slowly leaking out of here. And uh, the Raiders will be approaching the ball for their, what I should expect to be their final series here tonight. Our eye backfield, give to Adams. Working the right side, he's free and open. Oh, he's got some room. Turns the corner. There's only a couple men between him and Pedro. Oh, oh, you can't do that oh. arm tackling stuff. Oh, nice block. He's you in can't there. do that arm tackling stuff. Bobcats, you gave that TD away. You can't, you can't arm tackle a man in the open field. You gotta pop him. He shook two tackles that time, but he sure did. I believe it's just a little too late for South Floyd, but that's a nice way to end the game. As, Big uh, like that. The Raiders put six on the board and uh, nine seconds to go. And, you know, I don't know what uh, Coach said to him out there during that last huddle, but uh, it worked. Well, I can guarantee you one thing. Old Donnie Daniels, he'll work on them this season. He'll, he'll have them fired up. They will win some games this season, no doubt. All right, power eye backfield split to the left, wing to the right. Pitch back again to Adams. He's been the horse. He's trying to turn the corner. I don't know. He's close. I don't know if he made it or not. I don't believe so. And no time went off the clock at time. We have nine seconds remaining still, so 16-6. So that pretty well ensures even if some kind of fluke was to happen and they pick the ball up and run it in, that the Bobcats are still going to have the victory. But uh, they let that one get away from them. They had a shutout. They were pitching a shutout, and uh, they served up the home run ball. Couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> I'm grabbing analogies from every sport here tonight. Wait till you guys hear me get my hockey stuff in here later in the season. All right. <laughs> and the uh, crowd is kind of trying to find its way out of here. Good support from the Betsy Lane crowd tonight. No doubt they stuck with them through the whole game. And I hope they do that the whole season for this Bobcat team. And the uh, Raiders brought a good crowd oh, they did. over on B. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have a kickoff here in a moment by the uh, Raiders. I think you can expect an onside kick. I hope that, and it does look like he's got men with hands up on the front row. I see number 45 over there, Hamilton. Uh, number 16, the quarterback's out there. Number 11, uh, the fullback's out there. And then a couple other running backs. So they've got their hands up on the uh, front line. That's what you got to have. That's it. Just fall down. down. Just fall, fall down. down. No, he wants That's to all you do. You better to fall down on it. Well, only three seconds ticked off the clock, so as soon as Betsy Lane hikes it to game, it'll be history. Now, I assume that they're going to snap it and sit on it. That's what they ought to do. So make sure that uh, center quarterback connection's good and you can be out of here with a victory. Well, the clock's running now, and it's going to wind down. Oh, you're right. That's it. And tonight's ball game is officially over as the Betsy Lane Bobcats come out victorious by a score of 16-6. to Quite a fine game by the Bobcats. Both and teams are uh, going to meet in the middle of the field, shake hands, and that's good. You ought to, uh, particularly considering how hard fought this game has been. And uh, Adam, it's been uh, wonderful working here tonight, 16-6. Uh, to six. The whole game's been exciting. A defensive struggle in the first half. Bobcats get untracked a little bit in the second half. Arnold Adams makes a tremendous run. What would you say, 60-yard run? That's uh, every bit of 60 yards, and, every uh, bit of it. It's just been a great game, and I'm, I'm glad to have been here and been a part of it with WPRG TV5 Sports and you and Mark Love on camera. And I sure enjoyed doing it with you, Kent, and hope we can do plenty more ball games this season. 
And we want to tell all of our audience tonight's second game is Phelps taking on Mate One. So you'll want to keep it tuned here on WPRG. Then again, tomorrow night we'll be at Pikeville for the Pike County Bowl. So you don't want to miss all the great football action here on WPRG. Again, the final score tonight, 16 to six. The Betsy Lane Bobcats come out victorious. For myself, Kent Carter, and Mark on the camera, we'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you.